Okay, today we're going to be going through the A10C startup step by step from DCS. We're also going to be manually adding in some waypoints into a flight plan, and we're also going to manually add the weapon system. Uh, that will cause an error, um, which is the reason why I'm going to do it that way, just to show you exactly what's going on. Now, I'm not using track IR, I'm using the keys on the keyboard. This allows me to move around the aircraft. We can look at a particular point in the aircraft and zoom in. So you should be able to read all the text and everything and hopefully learn from it. If you are writing uh, the instructions down as you go along, if uh, you think of it in terms of you're sitting in this seat, so your right knee is here, your right thigh is here, and your right butt cheek is here at the back, and the same the other side. Left knee, left thigh left butt cheek here we've got the dash we've got the left mfcd and the right mfcd we've got the hood and the upfront controller so if you write a reference to that for instance right knee would be rk it gives you an idea of where to look in the cockpit for the various switches and buttons now it is a fairly straightforward startup routine you may see people doing it slightly differently, that's fine. Uh, some of the uh, features and systems you can switch on in whatever way you want really. But there's a, a, a system which is a navigation that has to be done very specifically, which I'll explain as we go along. So looking over here, which is going to be the right knee, zooming in, you've got tool tips on as well so that you can see them. Just be aware that on some servers tool tips will be switched off. So you really do need to learn the positions of the switches and what they do. So we're going to start here. The clicking you can hear is me putting my throttle back from the previous attempt. Right, so we've got battery power. We switch that on and the inverter standby. Now the objective of the exercise is to clear all the green lights from this panel here uh, to make sure that the aircraft's ready. Moving over here to the left thigh we've got the APU start so we'll switch that on and we can hear it spooling up there's the exhaust gas temperature and here's the APU climbing up when this gets up to about 100 this will drop and you'll hear the pitch change slightly and there it goes right so that means that it's ready to switch on the APU generator. The APU generator is over by the right knee and it's the top left of these toggles. We've now got power to the aircraft to start the systems. One of the first systems, and it is one thing that takes the longest, so you always want to get it going straight away, is there's a couple of toggles below the CDU, which is this area here. I'm going to press that one up and that one. Looking up at the right MFCD, and that stands for Multifunction Colour Display, we're going to hit the knob on the bottom left, just two clicks to bring, whoops, two clicks to bring that up to day, and the same with the left MFCD. And then looking down below that, we've got three toggles, we've got CICU, and we're going to switch that on, the JTRS, let's switch that on. And the IFC, we're going to move up one notch to the test position. When we look in the hood, we can see it's waiting for confirmation of running the test. So we hit the enter key on the upfront controller, and it will now start to do the test. Now people ask me, do you need to do that? Well, no, not specifically. However, you can have um, simulated failures built into the machine. So if you don't run this, and you get a failure that this could have detected, then I'm afraid that is your own fault. So now what we're going to do while we're waiting for that is start up the engines. Before we do that we need some sort of fuel. So we go over to the left knee, there's the boost pumps in the full of wing, left and right. And the main pull up, boost pumps, pull up. left and right. The voice you hear in the background altitude, altitude. is the warning system test as it's going through the tests. Now we're going to start the left engine first. In the simulation, you use the APU generator to start the left engine and the right engine. I believe in real life, once you've got the left engine started, 
use the left engine to start the right engine. So the left throttle will need lifting up and moving forward over this indent to the idle position. As that happens, you'll see a light coming on on the panel there and the dials on the left engine start to rotate. Now, the keys for the keyboard, you see this go, there's the light and there's the dials, I believe are uh, right alt and home for the left throttle and right control and home for the right throttle. Okay, now as we look at the screens, I'm going to press load all over here. Can be on any screen when we do that. Look up front, see the test is finished. So we press enter to exit the test, and then we change the selector down to exit and enter again. This puts us back at the main menu, and now we go down to this toggle switch and we push the FC all the way up, which will now give you all the hood iconography of the display. Now as you hear the engines are spooling up, or one of them at least, so we're going to move to the right now, and right mouse click, which pushes the little toggle there to shut the cockpit. Okay, that's closed and a lot quieter. Now, this is set up, so we're going to switch that onto CDU, this one onto TAD. All this does is it basically reflects the information that's showing on there. What we're waiting for, this is showing the CDU alignment process, is for these numbers to, to reach 4008. Ins and have ready will start to flash, and then we can move along with other systems on the aircraft. So while we're waiting for that, the dials here have settled, the engine start light's gone off, and we're going to start the right engine using the same procedure. You'll see the engine cycle start and the dials start to rotate. Okay, so now we can move down to the standby attitude indicator and rotate the knob there. That will uncage it, which is where the red flag goes. And we can just move this so it's level. That's uh, just in case all these systems fail. Right, now one thing I should have done is put the lights on. The lighting system is at your right butt cheek down here. You see five lights look like a figure of five on a dice. And at the top left, just move forward a little bit and you'll see the position lights. We're going to switch that to flash. Let's look at the wings just to make sure they're flashing. If they're not flashing, press, I believe it's right control P. Okay. Right, now, if we look here, we can see that the number has reached 4008 and it's flashing INS NAV ready. So now we press the button next to NAV and as I do that you'll see the core setting change. We move it down behind the buttons below the core setting we press the EGI button which is the navigation mode that we're going to be using. And we move over here. And we've got the your SAS and pitch SAS so we'll switch those on and press the takeoff trim. Looking at the green panel, we've only got uh, a few green lights ready. So what I'm going to do is look at the GCAS and the EAC. Now they are underneath here. If you move right the way down here, uh, let's have a look. It's probably as far as I can go. Move in. And then slowly look up and round. You can, very often, see the switches. way you've just got to get the right angle so I'm moving right over to the right side and you can start to see switches that appear under there so there's the one and the other one's further along however the easiest way can I find let's get a decent view on this is to position yourself over the top put your mouse onto the autopilot mode select slowly move to the left there's the autopilot, which is just on the edge, and then it will change. There's the radar altimeter or the GCAS. And we should see the EAC there. Okay, so if you look on the right hand side, I'm going to switch the EAC on now. See the light disappear. Move back to the right. And there 
is the radar altimeter or the GCAS on the right and that light has disappeared as well right so now we've got both engines going they're both settled down they look the same which is exactly what we want we're going to switch on the generators and these will generate power from the engines themselves for the plane systems which means we no longer need the APU generator or the APU once we switch these on we'll hear an audible alarm and we'll see a flashing light to remind us to switch this off ok so we switch the APU gen off and we scoot over here and we switch the APU off there which you'll hear spooling down dials reset ok right so now looking over here this is the TAD and we've got a symbol there that says not soy soy means the sensor of interest now when I say this sometimes it sounds like the center because of my funny accent um, but I'm actually saying sensor so it's s-e-n-s-o-r right what is a sensor of interest basically there's a number of them there's the TAD there's the hood there's the TGP uh, the MAV uh, when you run uh, other features and you have a collection of controls on the joystick and the throttle that relate to the specific sensor you have selected so for instance if I make this a sensor of in interest by hitting the TAD button again we'll now see a block around it and that label's gone I can move the cross and I can also zoom in and out etc and there's a few other features now if we do the same thing in the hood with the same controls we'll go along and look at the hood how do we know that sensor of interest we don't have a great big white label because it will cover too much information so what we'll see is a little asterisk up here about here ok I was a fraction off there that tells me the sensor of interest is here so when I use those same buttons that I used before on the tad look we've got that we move around and we can cycle instead of zooming through all the different waypoints held in the database now we can't remember or we don't know the order of these waypoints basically they waypoints that are in the database um, that cover all the air bases there's also a few added in by the mission maker but to actually select all of those and know where we're going just so we can see where we've got to go is quite difficult and complex and also we've got nothing showing up on the TAD to give us some sort of visual direction what we're going to do is go over to the CDU and we're going to add some waypoints into the flight plan so we're going to click the fifth button along just under the screen which is the flight plan menu <coughs> excuse me and now we're on the flight plan menu so we can have multiple flight plans that means we can go to any mission site we want and have a variety of waypoints set up for that what we're going to do this time though is edit this one so we click the button on the top right next to the flight plan and now we start entering flight plan information so you start to type in the flight plan and you'll see the first waypoint has appeared so once it's selected, you select the number next to the waypoint you want. We select the next one. <coughs> Excuse me, I do apologise for this cough. So when we select the next waypoint, which is BVAR 2, it, it finds BVAR 1 first. And now, because it's very similar, we've got to carry on selecting the letters so that we can change the end to a 2. And then we'll select that waypoint there location right, we've run out of space there this confuses people so now you can use the page down to go to another page we'll put in the next waypoint <coughs> and then we'll have one to take us back to home this is a location out to see to give us a straight in landing on the base Finally, we'll put in the airport that we start from and press the flight plan menu again. 
the little asterisk tells us which flight plan is selected and auto means it automatically switches from one way to uh, waypoint to another when you arrive at the previous one however I want that on manual so I'm going to select the button next to it there and so now I get control and I change the waypoint when I want one final thing we need to do there is change the steer point to flight plan and we'll change the page to steer point so now this provides steer point information if we look up here which is a copy of that because CDU selected we've got that information there if we now look in the hood remember the hood is soy and I cycle through the waypoints you'll see it literally cycles just through that flight plan and not all the different places in the database the numbers to the left of the name are just the number assigned in the database okay now as we move that you'll see the course setting change and it's pointing to where the waypoint is let's put that back to initial now looking over at the TAD, we'll make that soy. Zoom out a little bit. And you'll see the waypoint positions. Now if I make the hood soy while the way uh, while the TAD selected, we'll see the steer point. Remember, we said on the knob set steer points to waypoints. That's the yellow box. We've also got a wedding cake inside which is called the SPI which I'll discuss in another tutorial okay brilliant so we know where we're going but what are we going to do if we look down here at DSMS we haven't got any weapons so we need to load some weapons now we load weapons uh, there's a number of ways but the easiest way is to press the left alt key and the apostrophe or in the UK it looks you know the if you use the key with the at sign on that will do the job in other countries your key may vary but it's the one down not far from the uh, enter stroke return key um, obviously if I refer to hash your hash is in a different place uh, so you need to find out which key it is for your locale right so we literally select from the list the list is compiled in the machine editor uh, it's got a number of defaults so let's have a look down here we're going to pick up um, AMD 64 etc with some CBUs now if we notice here we've got the weight and the weight is heavier than the maximum weight you can fly um, overweight but believe me you need a long runway uh, you need to be very careful maybe a bit of flaps and it handles like a buzz now a buzz is one of those red double decker things you see on any video footage of London we can reduce the weight by reducing the fuel oops sorry about that but okay which is great um, except if we're going off and we need more fuel than that to get there or we can actually right click and let's clear that there now the particular mission say that we're going on we're just going to use Mavericks we can right click on where the missiles are go down here and choose now AGM 65 D times 3 so now let's move from 2 to 3 and we can do the same on the other side ok now if we check the weight the weight as gives us some significant overhead when we say ok we're going to get a response you'll see the request pop up in text up the corner and we'll get a response and they'll come and change uh, or add the weapons on they'll also tell us they're changing the fuel because we've moved this slider the fuel always goes first and you'll hear it go down if it feels like nothing's happening just look at the gauge over there you'll hear a noise like someone siphoning fuel out of your aircraft which they are and you'll see these needles start to go down so if that happens check over there um, just in case you're concerned nothing's happening when we hit OK request refueling there's a request request rearming and there's the copy. copy if you don't get a copy it means that nobody's there to do it or they can't hear you sometimes you'll have to look down at your left butt cheek Refueling complete. and there's a knob there and you change this to intercom currently it's set there on VHF you change that intercom make the request again and then try it 
Remember, if you do use this knob to put this back to VHF, the amount of times that gets forgotten about. Um, and then you'll try and do a radio call later on and nothing happens. Now, while we've been talking, you see the planes wobbling round and we've got red showing up on the DS MS. We've also got something flashing in here. Rearming complete. So the rearming's complete. Now this is trying to draw our attention, and not too subtly, to the fact there's a problem. So we've got a message on every screen that we can see. If we have a little look then, we can see here that we've got the DSMS, and it's red. Now, on missions that you go on that somebody's already loaded the aircraft up, then you won't, you won't get this. But if you do a, a rearm, or you start a mission and you know it's fairly more sandbox so you can do what you want after you've got to a certain point and you've loaded all the data off the cartridge and then you add weapons the plane systems aren't aware of them hence the red boxes and the messages so we use this little ack to acknowledge the message and now we need to sort this out and we do that by going back to the load screen how do we get there and if we hold a button down now we can use any of the buttons down across the bottom row but we're going to use the stat button we've gone back to this button which you would have seen earlier on uh, sorry screen and we're going to hit the load button and then hit the stat button now this button means load sorry this is this screen you see saw earlier we're not going to load all because we don't need to we just need to update the DSMS when we hit this you'll find all these asterisks disappear or symbols and they'll come back in a few seconds if we look at the DSMS we've now got all the weapons selected brilliant so now we've got somewhere to go and something to be getting on with okay I need to put this screen back to where we want it so currently we're on the CDU right so I've got a couple of switches left which is the anti-skid in the seat not armed so we'll push the anti-skid on, which is on the dash, left hand side, middle. And now I always put the landing lights on. So we've got some light on the outside. And usually the final thing, when everything's all ready to roll, we'd say, uh, we'd press the button of an as wheel steer and say, good jet ready. But before we do that, uh, there was one other thing I was going to do. And that is the runway. Now, if this is a new runway to you, one of the first things is which end you take off from. You'll get a call from the radio if you speak to the ATC, and they'll tell you to take off at runway 22. Runway 22 means run, uh, angle or direction 220. So if you turn this course setting all the way around to 220, that's the direction you'll be taking off. So if you're taking off in that direction, you want to be up this end of it and the runway goes over there now looking up here at the cockpit even though we can't exactly see or make out the runway clearly we know it goes from this way to that way so that means we need to be up this end rather than down that end that will stop people from taking off at different ends as you taxi around the taxiway you'll find this needle change so eventually when you're sitting at this end the needle is going to be pointing fully uh, 90 degrees to where you're looking. Okay, so once you've got that ready, we'll arm the seat. If you notice, I haven't done that till the last thing. Switch on the nose wheel steering. And we'd make a radio call to our flight uh, with good jet ready. That means good jet ready to taxi. Thank you for watching. Uh, please feel free to comment. If you've got any questions, just add them into the comments below. Thank you.